Welcome to Before After Omo. This is our fifth episode in which we follow Take Oshiro Iwa's investigation and interrogation into Chizuo Matsumoto. Our previous episodes covered the historical context for the increase of cults in Japan in the early years of doomsday cult guru Shoko Asahara. His birth name was Chizuo Matsumoto, and we will continue to use that name until we get to the part of the story in which he changes his name. This episode builds on the previous one, so we do encourage listeners to start at the beginning, or at least episode 2. I am Atsushi Sakahara, a filmmaker based in Kyoto, Japan, and I am a survivor in the Saringas attack 1995. I'm Pearl Chan. I'm a film and birth worker based in Hong Kong.、Mm. Uh, before we start today, I wanted to ask you to please rate and review our podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. We work very hard on bringing you the truth about Terrible Cult and Shoko Asahara. Please support us with a few minutes of your time. Thank you. As with the Last few episodes, our research relies heavily on the work on Fumihiko Takayama's book, Birth of Asahara, Asahara Shoko no Tanjo in Japanese, which has not been translated from Japanese into English yet. If you are a, a, a victim, you are a victim. You're not a journalist. So, this is a good thing. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. Last we left Chizuo, it was June 22nd, 1982. He's enjoying a nice day at home with his family, and then a buzz comes at the door. On the other side is Assistant Inspector of the Metro Tokyo Police Security Second Unit, Takeo Shiroiwa. Shiroiwa is a police officer in his 50s, born 1932. So, up until now, Takeo Shiroiwa had started to feel that Chizuo was a fraud. So, if you remember from the past episode, he started building his case more seriously after visiting Chizuo's seminar at Keio Plaza Hotel, where he saw a lot of people who he thought were vulnerable paying hundreds of dollars for these tinctures Chizuo was selling. So, he filed for a search warrant. I just want to butt in here and say that. Shiro Iwa's testimony is the one I trust the least. His tone is condescending, and of course, if you caught a small time scammer who ended up leading a doomsday cult, you would paint him as the same evil person at that age out to hurt people. Especially if, as you see, he does not get punished the way Shiro Iwa would have preferred. He gets off lighter than Shiro Iwa wanted. He claims that when he asked the people who were visiting the Keo Plaza that day and bought the tinctures if they had any effect, and that the response was often no effect or experienced diarrhea, I'm kind of skeptical that there wasn't even a placebo effect. After all, these people paid hundreds of dollars for a small 100cc bottle. If I bought something like that for that price, I'd break down his door if it did nothing but give me diarrhea. All to say, His account of the interrogation is very interesting. I just don't like the way he, he sort of talks about it. It's very patronizing. So he is at the door of Chizuo and links the boozer now. Female helper comes out. Shiroiwa hands her the search warrant and then Chizuo comes out. This is the first impression of Chizuo. A skinny but strong young man emerged. He had white, dark hair with a perm. He, his face looked bigger than it actually was, and he had a narrow forehead. His eyebrows topped down to the ends of face, and his eyes were small. 
His lips were pouting. His face looked like it had been compressed by a vice. <laughs> it is, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's very funny. But if you take a look at the, the picture of his, you know, he, he's, yeah, his face is like a, compressed by a vice, you know, I, I, yeah, I totally agree. So now, <clears throat> he showed Chizuho the research warrant. The warrant indicated that the drugs Chizuho was selling now could be violating the Japanese drug law for manufacturing a drug without permission. We have Shiro Iwas telling of this interrogation in Fumihiko's book, but let's recreate it as a dialogue to keep things interesting. I'll be Chizo and you can be Shiro Iwa. Does that work for you, Atsushi? Sure. Do you think it's okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I I'll, I'll be uh, you know, Shiro Iwa. Yes. Yeah, okay. Chizo, how am I violating the law? You say what you sell is good for rheumatism, blood pressure, and etc. You say it is effective. The content of the drug doesn't matter in these cases. But what doesn't matter is that you don't have permission to say it is effective. As I said, I have permission from the court to do a search of your home. Maybe it is better for you to show me what you are working on. Chizuo takes Shiro Iwa to the warehouse attached to the two-story home. Shiro Iwa asks Chizuo to explain each jar before he confiscated all the ingredients in jars and brought Chizuo down to the police station to interrogate him. What will happen to me? I just have a few questions. I'm not selling anything suspicious. It's effective. I don't know why this is happening to me. What are you selling isn't the problem, but how you sell it. You tell people your drug is effective, but the more reliant these people are on your drug, the less likely they will seek legitimate care at the hospital. The law exists to prevent these things. Other people work very hard to get permission to sell medication. If you do it the way you've been doing, honest people suffer. All the people on social security are penny pinching to come to you to buy your drugs. It's not a drug, you know, it's a natural food. Can you tell me about your family? Where are you from? I'm from Kyushu. My family lives in the countryside. I don't really talk to them. And you are an acupuncturist by training, correct? Yes, I studied acupuncture and Chinese medicine in school. What I'm selling works and it's all natural. Do you belong to any acupuncture association? No. Why not? It's by choice. In order to survive in a society that resists me, I have to take freedoms where I can find them. Do you have friends in the city? I don't have time for friends. I have two young children at home and a business to run. At your home, I saw an altar on the second floor. It is not often you find someone religious at your age. I'm interested in reincarnation and the consequences of heaven and hell. There are several layers of hell, you see, and it's important to have relief in knowing hell and paradise exist in this world. If you do something wrong, there will be consequences. It gives life meaning for me. There are monks who don't believe in consequences, but they stay monks. Those monks do it for the money. What will happen to me? Do you think there should be consequences for what you've done? I don't know what the problem is. I've been honest with you. These are natural supplements, not medicine. Everyone understands that. I'm not tricking anyone. You know what I think? This is serious, isn't it? Is there anything you can do for me? What will happen to me? You are a first timer. There probably won't be any jail time. You are most likely looking at the fine. 
If you are unhappy with the verdict, you can appeal it. After the interview, Shiroiwa said Chizuo Matsumoto isn't like other people, and I can sympathize with that. He had an ambition to succeed, but it was、uh, impossible for him to succeed doing something other people do. He had to find his own way. Whenever he did something, he was stopped by authority, powers. He was met with society resistance and、uh, he patchworked something together, an entirely new thing, a unique new way. For that purpose, he loves money, sees the power money provides. On first meeting someone, Chizuo's first instinct is to figure out if this person has more and less power than himself. For him, It was important to have Chizuo held accountable. He was concerned about his personality. If Chizuo can leave this case without punishment, he will use his talent and creative mind and harm people nationwide, creating a much larger problem. So, while Shiro Iwa wanted to push for more punishment, requesting that the case go to trial, The prosecution had a different idea. Essentially, the prosecution thought it would be unnecessary to have a trial, and instead he was detained for 20 days and fined 200,000 yen, which, if you remember, is actually less than what he was fined when he was asked to return for the insurance fraud. Shiro Iwa thought the sentence was too light. I just find it weird that he's fined only 200,000.、Mm. But you know, the other thing is like they've taken away all his bottles, they've taken away all his ingredients,、mm. and they've taken away his sort of confidence or, or they've taken away his branding.、Mm. And, and he's been told he basically cannot sell again.、Mm. So, so, yeah, I guess they've taken away their livelihood the way it, they didn't do in Asia Do, right? Like they didn't say shut down, they didn't say stop doing this. In Asia Do, they just took away and fined him for insurance fraud. Yeah, to begin with, yes, they did it, right? And then、mm-hmm. Shiroiwa came and then arrested, right? And、uh, yeah, I don't know. But you see, depends on how you see it. You know, thinking about the, the cost of the bottle, right? It's, it's, it, how much was it? It's like $600, right? For a bottle if it's expensive, right? About. No, no, no. The expensive one was a thousand. Huh? Thousand dollar?、Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. So it's a ripping、mm-hmm. off, you know? The blue, the blue dragon pill. It's, it's sort of a ripping off, right? Of course, of course. And then, so if you, depends, you know, structure wise, yes, maybe I can understand and I can, I could be sympathized with what he. Suffers or he encounters, but、uh, the way he makes money out of is、uh, ripping off, you know, basically、uh, fooling、uh, old people. That's something not good. That's awful. Yeah. And then also, I believe police should not、uh, arrest any people by hunch or, right? So, by what? By hunch. You need to do the proof, and、uh, it has to be solid proof and solid、uh, logic behind, right? It's, it's not democratic. But in reality, the, for practice, and then police are, how can I say, they see a lot of criminals, right? They know, yeah, they see, you know, so I don't know the hunch was correct or not. But I t h i n k Think maybe you know, uh, uh, he could, uh, uh, Shiroiwa could see a some pattern, unusual pattern of the criminals who do the big crimes later on, right? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but yeah, and、uh, you know, you see, it's not like a crime, crime meaning. 
his、uh, structure of his、uh, behavioral pattern of doing things like this has a mechanism to could be a larger scale, right? It's not stealing something from somewhere, the shops, or, right? That cannot be、uh, scalable. But what he chizo does is、uh, yeah, it is curiously scalable, right? Yeah, so I think that's what Shiro Iwa is concerned, right? Yeah. Like he thinks Chizuo is just some small time, whatever, whatever. But then when he realizes that this is scalable, that he can reach a big audience and that he has a talent, he has a creativity to reach more people nationwide and beyond, that's when he starts to get nervous. But I also think that, you know, he's talking to Fumihiko, he's thinking about this after. Shizuo has become Shoko Asahara after Om, after Saren Gas. And looking back, of course, he's like, I knew that guy was a bad egg. You know, it's、mm. not hard to. Yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly.、Uh, like uh, like uh, if it's、uh, like a Godzilla or monster movie, right? He was already a Godzilla, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people, <laughs> some scientists worried about, oh, this is going to be a Godzilla. They want to kill humans. And then he's very small, but he is a Godzilla. He is a dinosaur, you know? Do you know, do you, do you know the name of Godzilla's son? I don't know. What is that? I don't know. I think it's Manila. Huh? Manila? Minora? Is that right? Let me check. He's really cute. <laughs> yeah. Minora, really. Let's see, Godzilla's son. One second. Ariel? Ariel? Yeah. What's Godzilla's son's name? Manila. Manila. Yeah, his name is Manila. I guess what I was trying to say is that, you know, that Shiro Iwa is like, oh yeah, Godzilla is bad, and, you know, he's Godzilla and he's attacking Tokyo. <laughs> But it's easy to say that when. He's already attacked Tokyo. That's whereas... very correct. That's very correct. In retrospect,、uh, view、yeah. is not very accurate. For example, let's say,、uh, you know, there is a Sugihara, is a Japanese Sindora. Have you ever heard of him? Who helped the 6,000 Jews in Lithuania during the World War II? He's a consulate general in、uh, Lithuania from Japan, okay? He ignored the order from the Japanese government, that means from the emperor, and he helped the、uh, Jewish people, 6,000, okay? He stamped on the visa of 6,000 Jews to come to Japan, to leave、uh, Lithuania, to, to survive, right? But someone, one of my friends、uh, asked me to read the script, and I once read it, right? But it, it is written from the present point of view. Somehow I felt that he knew what was going on with the Holocaust, right? But <clears throat> at the moment, uh, uh, Mr. Sugihara helped those people. Probably he was not sure or maybe has some doubt, right? Yeah, like you can't tell 100% what is exactly going to happen, but you just feel like maybe.、Right. That's exactly、uh, what I. Experience with my survival in the subway gas attack. Because, you know, in retrospect, you can say, oh, you walked away from the、uh, syringa source right there, right? Then you move to the next car, shut the door, and you took the shower. That's how you survived, right? Coincidentally, right? But I had no clue what it was. It miraculously helped me because I、uh, rinsed away the uh, uh, syringas on my skin, right? Because nobody knew what it was. Because when I, I saw the doctor, right? The doctor told to the younger doctor that, oh, I, no, younger doctor came to the doctor who was seeing me and then he asked, is there any chance for the second hand infection? And my doctor says, I had no clue, right? So, they didn't have a clue. We didn't have a clue. And nobody really knew that was a s a l i n So, in retrospect, I can remember what happened to me. I can explain it as if I knew that was s a l i n But at the moment, I, didn't, I had no clue. Same thing. I think that's why I have a problem with Shiro Iwa's account. It's because. 
he paints it like he knew that Shizuo was going to do something bad if we didn't stop him, but the prosecutor wouldn't wouldn't prosecute him, and they let him off too easy, but I knew, I knew he was yes, you know, yes. capable of these evil things. If also, only. also like, you know, also, the, like, the, I know that are. those police officers, right, uh, mm-hmm. uh, have a group or belong to a society of the police officers. Even they are retired, right? And then mm-hmm. he must have a, a face to keep. In the society too. What right? do you mean? So. Oh, I see. Like he still. Yeah, I he, knew. Like, I knew, and then I did it. You know, but it doesn't work. That's the stance he wants to take, right? Yeah. Correct. Because uh, correct. Yeah, I was stupid enough correct. to let him go. Right? He couldn't say that. You know, <laughs> too too bad. You know, among, even yeah. among police officers. Yeah. And uh, maybe neighbors. Yeah. So if. Yeah. He, he's alone. If I interview him, I think he would say the same thing. We don't know the truth, you know. Somehow the information is skewed, right? Everybody mm-hmm. says some to Yeah. I don't know. Is this English? We 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 say in Japanese we say position talk. No, but yeah. I think for the sake of his mean. own position he speaks. Like right? the point of N- view. Not, it could be truth or almost truth, but tweaked in a way. So th- that is a possibility. Mm-hmm. So it's hard, you know, to see, uh, to believe in. It is too na- too naive to believe to believe in everything he says is true. So Shiro Iwa doesn't hear from Chizuo for another eight years, and when he comes across him, it's February nineteen ninety. Shiro Iwa is now working for the Yoyogi Police Station. He comes across a strange group during the election season for the Japanese diet. There are a number of young female adherents wearing a dog or elephant mask, dancing around one man who has a big beard and is kind of fat. He's singing into the microphone. In the beginning, Shiro Iwa does not recognize the man, but he later connects the man in front of him, Shoko Asahara, with the man he knew, Chizuo Matsumoto. At first, he is mad, and then he is worried. Shiro Iwa calls Om Shinrikyo headquarters and is told that Chizuo has gone away to Atami. He calls the dojo in Atami and tries to get through to Shoko Asahara. You see, this is what I mean. Like, who does he think he is to call up Shoko Asahara nine, eight years later and be like, and like basically call him to tell him off? Like, why in the world would Shoko Asahara pick up your phone? You know, like, that's what I mean. Like, he's so entitled. Hmm. Anyway. It's what I think. It's more like a... I don't know. Depend. I don't know. I'm not... A, I've never been an officer, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe tend to be like... Like uh, Asahara, the father, or something. You know, parents-like. You know what I'm saying? They... I don't know. Maybe the seasoned uh, detective uh, officer. Mm-hmm. Studying like himself a, as a yeah, preaching and getting closer, but yeah, but, but I mean, like, on the other hand, I think you're right. What is his pre- privilege, right? Yeah. What is the hell? Why the hell do you think you are entitled to call me up? I'm a free man so now, yeah, I mean, correct? That's what he I, yeah yeah he could say, right? Yeah, like I wouldn't pick up, right? If I was leading a cult where I had, like, beautiful young women in masks dancing around me. <laughs> like, I'm not interested in talking to you, Takeo Shiroiwa. <laughs> you know? But, you know, well. you see, I strongly suggest uh, to audience and you to look up uh, YouTube. You can find it easily. Like, oh, yeah. or... Okay, I'll post it. I'll post the link. Yeah. And uh, it's very weird, the political campaign. It's very strange. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> don't don't spoil it, actually. Sure. Okay. So next time we are jumping into his religious stuff, I promise. All the weird stuff. And so as we leave Chizuo today, he's had his most defeating episode. A fine 20 days detainment and confiscation of all his tinctures and ingredients. 
We know that his last encounter with the police was also very de demoralizing for him and changed him and his trajectory, and so we can only expect the same here. After this experience, he shuts down BMA and finds himself in financial trouble. But he also has more time on his hands to turn to new interests, new religions, or, in his words, superpowers. Atsushi, you want to sign us out? Yes. Please listen and subscribe wherever you listen. Review and ratings helps other people find us. Thank you for listening. Reaching out to us on Twitter at CultLeader and me. Thank you. Ah, uh, Atsushi, I have an update for you. Eh? I have an update for you. Update? Okay, what is that? Yeah, so we applied for ACID mm. in Cannes, and we got rejected. Yes. But, the, yes. yes, I understand. Yes, no. I don't know. My film is, I know, I understand that. I'm not surprising, and I'm, I'm not really uh, disappointed either. I'm fine. I'm disappointed. You're disappointed? Yeah, I'm Thank very you. disappointed. I'm very disappointed every time someone doesn't see the value. Someone doesn't see the appreciate value of our the film. film. Yeah, because I really think it's something very important. I think it's very important to play a film. This Why year do you more think uh, they year. they they don't? What do you think of the IDFA? They watched it, right? Ninety nine percent they watched. Oh really? Yes. Um, I think it's a great film festival. Yes, IDFA so is a great we'll film festival. we'll just have to see what they think. I don't know why, but maybe, you know, they tend to think I'm anti-democratic, maybe? No, I doubt it. I think I think they... I mean, I don't know anything. I really don't want to speculate. But but I think, like, very much the, the comments from your friend, right? Like, and also why we're doing this podcast is some people are like, well, I just don't understand why it's important. Because they don't remember the sarin gas attack, or, or that they just don't find two people talking very interesting. But I think ultimately it is very important. It's very important to talk to people who have harmed you. And I think we are currently living in a state of terrorism, constantly, right? Like, you know, we're in the middle. Like my friends in Halifax, where I went to school. Are on lockdown, and then a week ago, a guy shoots. I think fourteen people. He killed fourteen people. He just like opened fired. Like, how do you deal with that? If your family was hurt, or if you live in a situation where suddenly like you don't feel safe, right? So I think it's really important. Your film is really important because. Because it's important to talk to these people who have hurt you. I don't know. I just believe in retrib. I I believe in restorative justice. Me, I really do. Why do you think that uh, uh, hard to be picked by the festival is maybe I've been working on this project too long? Maybe that does it influence or not timely? Maybe I don't think so because it's still a world premiere, um, but. But it might be like it's just a bad year, right? Everyone is canceling, and and I think, um, like I don't know, just like programmers might have less time actually because they're more stressed, and yeah, like I think people are just like less patient. Programs are smaller, um, yeah. So we'll have to but see how everything turns out. I I just talked about my not my composer for this film, the composer friend. And but I, you know what, uh, my I have a very strange feeling, you know. You know, I had some disappointment or anticipations, etc. I used to, but not anymore. Meaning, my most important thing is uh, is the film. Anything I I compromise and I didn't, right? No, I if, think that's the thing is I don't think you compromised anything. Anything, right? right? And then I have well. what I want to have. And then if you make a compromise in the work, you know, the, then that will be the compromise forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that's what I, that's how I felt when I received your friend's comments. Mm. 
I just thought, no, that's not the film we're making. Right. So I don't know. I might sound like really confident, a little bit arrogant, but I really, really do think that I really do think that this is a film worth taking a chance on. I think this is a film that is important. Yes. That is impactful, and I think it's essential for yes our history right now. Right. So it is going to be. Uh, I think you know. I'm. I'm. I don't know. Yes, of course, for our. Uh, we are in the uh, movie business, right? For mm-hmm. movie business, uh, film festivals is a very essential part of our business. But I don't feel anything, meaning it's not the primary issue. Primary issue is that we did not make any compromise and we are fine. We have it. And then it will survive in the society, in the history, whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. 